Toronto, where you wanna get the city love. I'm from Toronto, where you wanna get the city love. I'm a Toronto man, we wanna get the city love. My city love me back. Welcome to episode 1450 of Toronto Mike, proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery, a fiercely independent craft brewery who believes in supporting communities, good times, and brewing amazing beer. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. Palma Pasta. Enjoy the taste of fresh, homemade Italian pasta and entrees from Palma Pasta in Mississauga and Oakville. The Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team, the best baseball in the city outside the dome with eight championships since 1967. RecycleMyElectronics.ca Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. The Advantaged Investor Podcast from Raymond James, Canada. Valuable perspective for Canadian investors who want to remain knowledgeable, informed, and focused on long-term success. And Ridley Funeral Home, pillars of the community since 1921. Today, returning to Toronto Mike to explain why he's in such a pickle, it's FOTM Hall of Famer Peter Gross. Welcome back, Peter. Hey, Jack Dominico sponsors your uh, your podcast. Well, Thank shout you. out to Ridley Funeral Home. Jack is no longer with us. So well, there you go. And the family sold the uh, team, and there's new ownership and a whole new vibe, a lot of excitement. I want to see you, Peter Gross, at Christy Pitts for some Toronto Maple Leafs I, baseball this summer. I had some interesting interaction with Jack Dominico over the years. Well, uh, Anything you can share? A little well, well, I, well, I hosted his uh, annual banquet every year when he brought in these great baseball players. Really? Yeah. You remember Bill Buckner? Who? Oh, how could I forget who blew Bill that Buckner? Ground ball. <laughs> Do I remember Bill Buckner? <laughs> Peter, come the on. World Series. He was that one. I remember interviewing him, and he, he was very dignified and, and good with it. Yeah, he accepted it. He even did a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Uh, you know, he's no longer with us either. Oh, did he pass? Yeah. Oh, Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. And and just to tell the listenership, you literally just met Brad Jones. You've met him at a TMLX event, but you're here for a recording. I was just recording Life's Undertaking, which is a Ridley Funeral Home's podcast. We just kicked out the most popular funeral songs. It's a fascinating episode. I'll post it right after I post this episode. But you and Brad were chatting a little bit about what we're going to chat about right now. Please, if you take a moment here before we talk about why you're up Shit's Creek without a paddle, and we're going to get into the details. I've got the receipts. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Since you were last here, we lost, uh, sp- speaking of Ridley Funeral Home, we lost Gord Pinsent. Oh, really? Didn't you have some kind of a connection with Gord? Oh, it, it's really vague. There was a CBC drama in the 70s in, in which... Uh, was it a CBC? No, it was Only God Knows. He 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 was one of the lead actors in Only God Knows, and I had one scene with an actor named John Beck. I wasn't in a scene with with Gordon Pinsent. But you're so you were in the same uh, television movie. I, I was, was in a, in a movie called Only God Knows. Uh, that, that Gordon Pinsent started. Did, I, did you I, meet I never, Gordon? No, I, I never did. Okay, okay. So that means you're right. It's a mild connection, but I just remember, like, I take these notes and as I, like, come across things in the zeitgeist. And I had a note that you were connected to Gordon Pinsent, but I didn't have any more detail than that. But you were in the same uh, movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, since we last talked, have you won or been nominated for any Sovereign Awards? Negative. I, I, didn't, I didn't make the cut this year. How is that so? Like, how? How do they overlook the uh, great and powerful uh, host of Down the Stretch, the definitive <laughs> Ontario horse racing podcast? Um, I submitted a story I wrote that I thought was pretty good, but there there were some um, better uh, submissions made. And um, I submitted a podcast to, for two years in a row. I, I was nominated, but the podcast is audio and it, it goes in the category of audio visual. So Woodbine Entertainment always gets nominated every year because they have multi-million dollar sure. cameras and editing and stuff. And uh, uh, somebody else submitted a better video than my podcast. So negative on that. Okay, negative on that. Now, hopefully positive on this. Uh, how old is your mother now? She had a birthday. Was it yesterday? No. Yeah, yeah, she was 101 yesterday. Okay, please. 
while you tell me, I'll be listening as I grab a gift I have for you that ties in nicely with the Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team. But please tell us all, how is your mom doing? Uh, 101 is amazing. Congratulations to her. Tell us a bit about your she, mom. She's sensational. She's uh, in, in perfect physical health. I think she's got some slight hearing problems. Sometimes I have to shout on the phone to her. Um, and, and part of the story that I'm going to tell you involves her. She decided a year ago. Isn't that lovely? And she decided a year ago that she shouldn't drive anymore, so she she gifted okay. me she gifted me her car. We're we're uh, celebrating her birthday on Saturday with Chinese food. Amazing. Okay, so happy birthday to your uh, Marilyn. your mom, Marilyn Gross. Was that her, what last name did she use? Gross. Yeah, Marilyn Gross. Marilyn Gross. And only two days different than my daughter's birthday because tomorrow my daughter my youngest turns eight. So that's exciting, that 101-year-old and an 8-year-old. Like, isn't that amazing? Yeah. She's, your daughter's got 93 years to go. <laughs> now, what did I go get for you? I have for you, Peter Gross, a wonderful book. It's hardcover. It's got great pictures. And it's the history of Toronto Maple Leafs baseball. I just think you would love that. So that's a I, gift I, I'm giving thank, you now. Thank you. I, I will enjoy that. It looks great. The Toronto Maple Leafs uh, history. And, of course, Peter, every time you visit... You don't leave without a frozen lasagna from Palma Pasta. You still a big fan of Palma Pasta lasagna? Oh, the, the, the Palma Pasta lasagna it gets the vote as the, the best lasagna I've ever eaten. I've made my own. Garnet Barnsdale has uh, made lasagna for Shout me. Shout out to Garnet. That is terrific. But uh, even he agrees that the Palma Pasta is the best. If you come to TMLX uh, 15 on June 27 from 6 to 9 p.m. at Great Lakes Brewery in South Etobicoke, You'll be fed more palma pasta. We'd love to see you there. Well, I'll come for the pasta and I'll enjoy it. I'll <laughs> ignore all the conversation. I'll just eat the pasta. All right. I feel uh, like let's get to the fireworks factory. Okay. I'm uh, eager to get straight there. So where do we begin? So, Peter, where, how do you set the table on this? I do have audio when it comes time for the audio. I have four yeah, clips. Yeah. But please... Tell us, start at the beginning. Uh, does it relate to your mom no longer driving? You tell oh, me. Oh, only vaguely. I, just to tell you that uh, I'm, I'm somewhat mentally unhinged right now because of all of these circumstances. Essentially, uh, my insurance lapsed today. Well, hold on. You're sort of, isn't that, you're, you're sort of coming Is in that strong the there. Yeah. I feel like that's the punchline. <laughs> so we're talking, let's get very specific. You and I are speaking right now at almost 6 p.m., Eastern time on a Thursday, March 14th. This is Pi Day 314. So March 14, 2024, we're talking right now. And you're telling me your driver's insurance is about to lapse. Yeah. And, and uh, all of my efforts uh, to renew insurance or get insurance have failed. And, I, and this is the story that we're going to unwrap as we go along. Okay. So what day, when specifically will you no longer be insured to drive? On uh, Friday, Tomorrow. March the 15th. My daughter's eighth birthday. Yeah. Okay. So... Okay, this is something we need to uncover this and we need to walk through this, how this happened and why you're uh, like, again, up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Walk me through it, Peter. You know, uh, we all love you. If anyone out there can do anything, they will, but we need to find out exactly what's going on here. Okay, much as I'd like to use this platform to generate sympathy for me over the story of how badly I've been screwed by an insurance company, um, the, the real important thing is that this is all should be truthful. So... We'll start with this. Well, you're the, I should just tell people, though, I've known you for years now. Your greatest flaw, if you have one, is that you cannot tell a lie. Like, I mean this sincerely. You are honest to a fault. Okay. Hold, this is my observation. Now continue. Hold, hold that thought. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I know. February the 27th. Now, I, I, I've told you that for the last year and a half, I've, I, I started driving for DoorDash, and now I'm driving for Uber. Uh, I just need to make money. You're making some extra money. Yeah. Okay. So I'm driving for DoorDash February the 27th. I had an at fault accident. Okay. 2024? 2023. Okay. So a, over a year, a year ago. A year and change ago. Okay. Um, I'll just briefly tell you the circumstances. I had just completed a delivery to 105 the Queensway. If anyone knows that apartment building, I was driving in a southeasterly direction. It was, I, I was turning right sort of on a circular part and there was um, a slight incline and from the time that I went in the building to the time I came out, there was this almost violent snowstorm. 
So when the snow immediately lands on the pavement, there's kind of a silicone effect. It, it doesn't integrate with the pavement. And I was going about 10 kilometers an hour and a, a, a car was coming north on the street and I braked and I slid into him. Okay. And I did, uh, I, I ripped the grill off the front of my car and did some damage to this guy's car. So I phone RBC insurance, which so you're insured at this point in the story, you're insured by RBC insurance. Yeah. So okay. I, I phone and having a great conversation with the guy, I tell him exactly what happened. Cause as you pointed out, I tell the truth. I slid into to a fault. Guy. Yeah. Okay. And, and I mean this, by the way, he, people. He's, he's telling me, don't worry, you're covered, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, it's a good thing I'm covered because I'm driving for DoorDash. So you volunteer this information. Yeah. You disclose that you're driving for DoorDash. And at that point, he says, oh, well, we don't cover you if you're driving for DoorDash. And the conversation basically came to an end. So now... Now, okay, now let me ask some questions. People are going to be yelling at their, uh, okay. their iPhones and stuff. So did he ask you if you were driving for DoorDash? No. So you just felt like dis you just felt like volunteering this information. I think at one point he said, uh, based on your... Uh, your contract with us, we will provide you with a substitute vehicle. And I said, well, that's good because I'm driving for door. So you're having like chit chat with this guy yeah. as if he's a buddy. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about this later. Okay. Keep going. So now, uh, I need to find a company that will insure for DoorDash and, and quite frankly, no, no insurance company. Insurance. Well, hold on. I have some clips that might tell. So, so no, no, don't, okay, don't play yet. them yet. Don't okay. play them yet. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Don't yell at me, Peter. There'll be a, there'll be a time. I'm taking that lasagna back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but we're, we're coming close to that. Okay. Um, a side story is that all the DoorDash guys are driving without insurance. Okay. But I don't want to. And drive. one of these clips does kind of reference this. So it yeah. will, yeah, we will come back to um, this point. So I find out that, uh, intact, which is a company, uh, I've seen uh, their ads. Yeah. Intact. Out of uh, broker link. I'm always confused about what is broker link. What is intact? broker link is, is a broker that directs you to the current, correct insurance. So I phone broker link and like that's I, an, like you said, an insurance broker. So they will try to find I'm you. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I phone intact. I'm talking this directly to intact. Th th these recordings that we have is, is with this agent from intact. Okay. 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 So you can play this first clip because I'm basically Just a little intro here. Yeah. So we get a taste of, well, and, I, and this is what I tell the, the guy and, off the beginning. And before I play, uh, how is it that we have this audio? Did you record the call? They recorded the call, and, and as I got call. into this argument with them over what they've done to me, I asked for it, and they were good enough to send it to me. Oh, well, maybe there's a law that they have to. I'm glad that they sent it to yeah, you. Yes. And here is... So this is the first clip I want you to hear. And from what I remember yesterday, Peter, you're looking for Uber coverage, right? U Uber or, or DoorDash. All right, sir. So from my knowledge of the industry, uh, right now, nobody offers DoorDash coverage. Everybody doing DoorDash is kind of doing it under the radar, and if uh, they had a claim, um, they wouldn't be covered. Industry-wide, there is coverage for Uber and Uber East with specific companies, and I have access to two of the most popular ones uh, that cover you for that. Okay, I'd, I'd be interested in getting a quote for that. Okay, so this agent for uh, Intact is revealing that they, there is nobody who will cover a driver for DoorDash. Yeah. They're all doing it under the radar, he says. But they do have some a couple of places that will cover you for Uber Eats. Yeah, it's important, important to note he's telling me that he can get me coverage for driving for Uber Eats. And, and subsequent, right. subsequently, I applied to Uber Eats, and, and quite frankly, they're, they're far more careful the, than DoorDash. However, I want you to play, play the next clip okay. be, because uh, th this is relevant to, to your notation that I'm an honest guy. So listen to what <laughs> I, I said. I said honest to a fault. Oh, okay, honest, listen to what I told the guy. And Peter, can you tell me a bit about uh, the car and your driving history? I have an excellent driving history. I've been, I'm 72 years old. I've been driving since I was 17. I have never been at fault in an accident. I don't drink. I don't use drugs. I've never driven high. I've never driven stoned. Um, it is a uh, 2019 Nissan Micra. 
Okay, so you're telling him the truth, which is uh, you're, well, you're, well, you're a sober driver. In I'm careful. telling him that I've never been at fault, but I was at fault. The distinction here is this is just a few days after the at-fault accident, and I believed at the time that I wasn't at fault and was subsequently... Okay, uh, like George Costanza, it's not a lie if you believe it to be true. Okay, so when you're just saying there that you have never had an... Because you're saying there... Can I play it again? And I noticed yeah. the way they recorded it is uh, one of... I guess one of you is in the left channel okay. and one of you is in the right, so it's a little interesting. Yeah, play, play it again. Um, Peter, can you tell me a bit about uh, the car and your driving history? I have an excellent driving history. I've been, I'm 72 years old. I've been driving since I was 17. I have never been at fault in an accident. I don't drink. I don't use drugs. I've never driven high. I've never driven stoned. Um, it is a uh, 2019 Nissan Micra. Okay, your exact words were, I've never been at fault in an accident. Because when you said that, you believe that to be true. Because yeah, nobody yeah. had told you otherwise. And the distinction here is that at fault is an insurance term. Okay? It, 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 if you and I run into each other, we don't, we don't sort of sit on the sidewalk and say, well, who's at fault? Because we're both going to say neither one of us at fault. The driver doesn't determine who's at fault. The industry does. And to this right. day, yeah, to this day, 54, 55 weeks after that incident, RBC has not contacted me to say you were at fault. They uh, put it, it on is the, an industry term, right? So you don't speak that yeah, way. Yeah. So, so, and, and in fact, Intact has accepted uh, th that argument that I, I believed at the time that yeah, I was Yeah, and again, at fault. It, as far as you're concerned, it was Mother Nature was at fault for that accident. Yeah, I, I, I thought, as it turns out, it, it doesn't matter. And, and that's well, fine. Uh, okay. Uh, so, okay, so now... This conversation of the intact, and when is this conversation from that we're listening that to? That right was now? so the accident was uh, February twenty seventh. It might have been March the first, March the second. It was. And we're talking twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Okay, and, one year ago. And and from that conversation, I did get uh, insurance. In fact, the guy gives me a spectacular quote, which ne never went through my bank account. It was always much more, but uh, that's either here nor there. Um, but, but that is interesting. But why the hell aren't you playing with the quote? Why aren't you, why oh, are you paying oh, I, more? I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> so they quoted you with an insurance. So Intact insured you for Uber Eats. Yes. Because nobody insures you for DoorDash. So, yeah, can't be insured for DoorDash. Interesting. Uber. So now I want you to play that because here's the crux of this argument. It's, did the guy mm -hmm. ever ask, because... Uh, what I'm getting in response to my argument that they shouldn't have uh, lapsed my insurance is that they never asked me the correct question. It's like the, true detective over here. Start asking the right question. Yeah, yeah. It, they had an obligation to ask me, have you recently had any accidents? Have you had any accidents that you should tell us about? Play the clip. This is the question and the only question in this 13-minute recording regarding any accidents that I've had. Do you have any um, unfortunate circumstances where you were not at fault? Someone crashed into you? I, yeah, like in the 70s, a guy rear-ended me. I had a beat-up old culture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, I... I off, off the record, I'm pretty good at putting little scrapes in parking lots. First of all, first of all, you know there's no off the record, right? <laughs> it, was, it was on the <laughs> but, but what did you hear in that question? Uh, did, you, if, if, did you ever have any uh, accidents that were not your fault? Is that what they asked? Here, I'm, I'm going to play the first part, then I'll break it down. Play it again. Do you have any um, unfortunate circumstances where you were not at fault? Someone crashed into you? Did Someone you have, crashed yeah, into did you. you. have any unfortunate circumstances where you were not at fault? Somebody crashed into you. That's what, and, and my response has to do with. You went back to the 70s. He's cueing me. And, and the only time anyone ever crashed into me. It was in the 70s. Yeah. Okay, so you were you answered the question honestly. The questions he's asking you very specifically, because I'm, you know, as much as I'm your friend, I'm trying to be objective here. But that question to me is very clear. Have you ever had an accident that was not your fault where somebody crashed into you? And I'm thinking now a Mazzy star fade into you. But the answer was, yeah, in the 70s. And he laughs. Okay. He literally now, laughed. I want you to read 
This line here. Oh, my eye, okay. Peter. Peter, I'm, this, I'm almost 50 years old. Yeah, I know, that font is You read it. I'll trust that okay, you read I'm it right. This is in this. court, okay, and, and Peter? This is, um, and, and this, this matters because <laughs> I know. this is how the insurance company is responding line. to me. Okay. Um, and this is a letter from a woman in the customer experience team who has sent- Intact? At intact, yeah. Okay. Essentially turning down my request. Oh, I, I sort of left out. That. Well, do you want to read that? Let me play the last clip, and then you can tell us basically what No, is- no, don't play the next clip because it's, okay. it's a different subject. I, I need to tell you that in October last year. Okay, October 2023. In, intact sent me a letter saying, we're going to cancel your insurance effective March 14th, 2024, because you failed to tell us about this incident. Okay, and the incident where that you that they say you failed to tell them about was the one from February 2023 that yes. you, you were telling me about with those those so, no okay and, and I I'm arguing you never asked me properly yeah you didn't ask me about that so finally you're not finally you Peter Gross are only answering questions you're asked because my biggest uh, concern is you like to volunteer and disclose things that yeah, aren't being yeah, asked because yeah, they said did anybody run into you the answer was no because. You ran into this guy in February 2023. So, in this ongoing argument where I've asked them to remove, because they, they've got this term called misrepresented. Yeah, you lied, be, they be, say. Because I misrepresent. Yeah, we, I, I lied because I didn't tell them about this incident. So they turned down my request to remove the misrepresentation. And part of the reason is this. She, mm-hmm. The woman writes me back. This was, uh, this was a week ago. Okay. You were asked... If there were any other unfortunate incidents in your driving history that should be reported. So this this woman from Intact is saying you were asked if there was any other unfortunate incidents. But in fact, the only question to that nature is this one again. We're going to play it again. Do you have any um, unfortunate circumstances where you were not at fault? Someone crashed into you? Yeah, they, they, the question she says was asked of you is different than the question yes. that was actually asked of you. If you were asked that question, knowing you as well as I know you, if you were asked the question that this woman wrote about uh, a week ago, you would have said, in wow. February yeah, 2023, yeah, 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 yeah. there was a snowy day and I slid into this And it wasn't guy. my fault, and it wasn't my fault. Um, and, and by the way, uh, whatever happened for that accident in February 2023, did RBC pay for that damage? They did not. So just so, because this came up with Brad Jones just when you got here, but you paid out of pocket. How much did you pay out of pocket for that? 3300 So $3,300 in the damage that was caused by the, so can, can, this is Brad's point and something to investigate. But if you paid, if you did not receive any money for the insurance company, is that actually a claim? I don't know. Like, you know, anybody can just pay out of pocket and not put in a claim. And a lot of people don't put in claims because it's not worth the trouble. If it's like, oh, I can fix this for fifteen hundred bucks, I'll cough up fifteen hundred bucks and not even deal with putting in a claim. But you put in a claim, they never gave you a penny. It, they never gave you a penny because it was DoorDash. Is that right? Yeah. I, I did. I put in a claim. I just phoned and said this happened. Okay. So if if there was a claim created and it was rejected because of DoorDash, but they don't give you any money, can you like <laughs> retroactively? Remove the claim. Uh, uh, interesting questions for somebody listening who knows more about car insurance than oh, we God, do, I, right? I went at it with RBC, yeah, and um, they they were not helpful. I went at it with DoorDash. DoorDash, DoorDash refused to cover me um, because um, I had, was not in the midst of making a delivery. I had completed my delivery. Uber Uber's much better, by the way. Um, but, but, but again, uh, we have one more clip to go in. Yeah. I have more questions. But effective tomorrow, you can't drive a car. No. Peter, I'm feeling sick for you, man. Like, you, you need to, for your livelihood, you need to drive around so yeah. you could feed your family and pay your rent. You got it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it, man. So, so the, the, the punishment is extreme. And I've I've tried to convince them that the line of questioning was 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 vague and uh, not fully competent. Um, but by, by the way, the, one of the reasons that I'm feeling very unhinged right now is about an hour and a half ago, I had a forty minute conversation with a woman from BrokerLink. The woman the woman who actually sent me the letter on. October the 13th, telling me that my insurance is going to lapse. And I had this conversation with her and she was very stern with me and to keep telling me this is my fault. And it's my fault because she said, we read you a disclaimer. This fellow, Sean, in this conversation read me a disclaimer. And in the disclaimer, 
he says to me, please be advised that if you fail to reveal any claims or uh, disqualifications or convictions, your insurance could be terminated. So, and, and and when she's saying this to me, I'm saying, oh shit, because I've, I've had conversations with insurance people and they say, we're obliged to read this to you. Have you, have you ever had that circumstance? And they, they read it in this robotic way and I tuned out and I, as, as I'm yeah, having it's this like con- fine print in a contract, yeah, yeah, right? And, yeah. And, Please be advised. And we and we have the information. And and so she says to me very specifically, we told you that if you fail to reveal any claims or convictions, you're and, and I and I and so I at the time of this conversation a couple hours ago, I went, Well, I wasn't really paying attention and I wasn't listening. However, yeah, I went back to the audio, yeah. the 13 minute audio conversation with Sean. He never read that disclaimer that's significant yes it is i would think so is there any like any channels where you can go to any kind of uh like what are your options at this point and when can i play this final clip i have the clarification maybe i can play it right now no don't don't play it now because it refers to something else that i'm going to get into okay peter you asked you asked me yeah you asked me like 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 is there an ombudsman or ombuds person that you can because because it sounds like if they didn't read that bullshit caveat which is basically a lawyer wrote to cover their ass right and again i'll Again, this is the question you were asked. Do you have any um, unfortunate circumstances where you were not at fault? Someone crashed into you? Someone crashed into you. And then you start going on about something in the 70s. That's how honest you are. You're disclosing something that happened during the Nixon administration, okay? And then, (laughs) I'm not a crook. I am not a bad driver. Okay, but... Oh my goodness! You were never asked about any incident that happened yeah, he beyond. He, if, he, uh, if he'd worded it, like just ha, say, "Have you had any accident whatsoever? Has there been any collision?" But here's what's interesting: just an interesting thing, knowing your personality, is that in the RBC call, nobody asked you, "Were you delivering food for any food company delivery services?" And then you're like obliged to say, "Yeah, I was doing a DoorDash delivery." But they didn't even ask that, and you decided to just share them. Like, this is what I had for lunch. I just did DoorDash. I'm doing this, that, the other. But here, <laughs> you're only answering the questions you're asked now. Like, it's just interesting how that worked. But okay, so Peter. Is there the ombuds person or something you can... Uh, well, listen? yes and no, because I the ombuds person is a, a group called Customer Experience, and I ran it by them, and I've read you the quote in which they've declined to remove the, the the term misrepresentation it's worse to have that on your driver's record than the fact that you smoked a pound of crack cocaine and were hopelessly drunk and ran through a school zone at 90 miles an hour and ran over six kids the misrepresentation has basically deemed that that as of today i can't get insurance and i can't work so and for the record, you haven't done any of those things. Like you, did, I, no, you didn't run over no, the six no, no, kids. No, and no, okay, no, no. I, and I don't drink and I don't. No, I know you don't, don't drink. Don't, I didn't even give you Great Lakes beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just full disclosure, last Friday, I went to the uh, Brampton court and filed the small claims against uh, Intact. Okay, at least you had that channel that you could uh, explore. You know, Lauren Honickman is just a call away if you need some legal advice. Well, I, 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 I like to play amateur lawyer. Um, quite, quite frankly, That's I, always a good idea. I've used the small claims strategy three or four times in my life, and each time against a big monolithic party, and, and each time I've won. Uh, okay, but, but in the meantime, tomorrow, Friday, March 15th, the Ides of March, my daughter's eighth birthday, how do you make deliveries for Uber Eats? I'm, well, I'm not. Uh, a bicycle? No, I'm. I, I won't be working. Rollerblades. Uh, I've, you know, I've got the 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 down the stretch podcast and the down the stretch newspaper that I can pay both, more attention in the short in the, in the short term. I can deal with that. But we sh- don't know how long this will go on for. I'm just thinking about your livelihood, right? Because there's a reason you started doing the door dashing, and you've been, you know, you you had some success. And I'll make up numbers, but even if it was an extra thousand dollars a month, let's. I'm making up numbers because they're round. Okay, it's more than that. To me, that's the difference between uh, going to bed with an empty tummy and uh, you know taking care of the family. No, no, it's it, it, it's been incredibly important to me. Um, I, I I kind of enjoy it. it. It's it's frustrating and it pays crap. But you wouldn't do it for free. 
No, and 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 the fact that that I, I've got some income from uh, from pensions and from the newspaper and from the podcast, and it just it augments it. Of course, and, and, and it's a gig and, co- economy. And, yeah. and you know, when I have an important interview, I pull over, I log off uh, of Uber, and I, I do the interview for my podcast. But how are you going to like? How do you get your grandkid to the the birthday party? Like, are you going to just be uh, you're going to be the Uber guy now? You're well, going to be uh, the um, rollerblader in in the short term. I'm not driving. You know, uh, no, I meant I don't mean I meant you go calling an Uber so they can drive you like using uber because uber is not just uh, for you to drive right it's oh, no, I, I, are you asking what i'm gonna do now that yeah. i can't drive um like I, how I, do you I, get if you're gonna do an interview at woodbine how are you getting to woodbine this weekend well i, I can do it's not a big issue because because i do most of my interviews on the phone roger's gonna drive me when i have to be driven i will take the public transit i will rollerblade to the grocery store um you know, it can be done. Do you remember, you know that uh, something like three years ago I had that stroke? Of course. And and it was a... Well documented on Toronto. Yeah, and, and, and the stroke affected my eyesight. So because of that, the Department of Transportation or the driver, they took my license away until uh, I had uh, my eyes checked. So there was several weeks in which I you couldn't drive. So okay. I, I got what that. was the detail you wanted to share before okay, I okay. the last clip? So <laughs> I'm being accused of misrepresentation. Okay, because I failed to disclose that I had this accident. Play this clip now, because the guy's assuring me that I'm ins- that I'm insured for driving Uber Eats. Yes, sir. Is there any other uh, questions I can help answer for you before we go? Just, just to be clear, for that way, I get complete coverage while I'm delivering for Uber. Yes, Uber, not DoorDash, but yes, Uber. In the, clear to me, like and that is crystal clear. Could that to be me. more specific? Okay, you, okay, so clarification. September, I had a, a, a incredibly minor incident in which my car touched another car. September twenty twenty three. Was it September twenty? Are you looking? No, the year twenty twenty three. Oh, to September twenty twenty three. I think it was September eleventh. I think it was nine eleven. Quite funny. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> my car. My car. The worst is, this is the worst thing that's ever happened on nine yeah, eleven. Yeah. My car touched another car, so I phone intact and i tell them there was this it was if i don't even know if it qualifies as a collision but i say to them there's no damage to my car and the woman at intact says that's good because you were driving for uber at the time and we wouldn't have covered you wow now so one of those one of those sentences must be wrong Either you're completely covered for driving Uber Eats, or because you're driving for Uber Eats, you're not covered. You know, this this is you're just uncovering uh, this this whole new gig economy with the Uber Eats and the the DoorDasher. And how many of these drivers are uninsured? And what happens when you get in an accident when you're delivering food from McDonald's to somebody who? Uh, well, I can't speak for the DoorDash, but I think most of the DoorDash guys are uninsured. Well, it sounds like they're all uninsured, and it sounds like even the Uber Eats people who think they're insured are not actually. Oh, Okay, well, the, now let me clarify. So I subsequently contacted Uber Eats, and they were very good. They do cover me. And well, Uber Eats is covering you, but I mean, yeah. uh, you were told by... I, I have uh, it yeah, here on the yeah, record yeah. here. Play, that it again. Intact Play it again. Is, Intact is telling you... Yes, sir. Is there any other uh, questions I can help answer for you before we go? Just, just to be clear, for that way, I get complete coverage while I'm delivering for Uber. Yes, Uber, not DoorDash, but yes, Uber. Peter, wow, this is uh, needs further investigation. Like, I think you're just pulling at the threads and you're unraveling the whole uh, crooked infrastructure. I think that you're like the new Peter Silverman. <laughs> watch it, buddy. Yeah, watch it. I so I just, uh, anyways, I, I've, I've included the transcript of that in my action against Intact. So, what are you seeking from Intact in this uh, civil matter? Well, the main thing is I, I need them to remove the, the definition that I misrepresented. Because you can't get insurance. Yeah, because it's, it's killing me. And you're 72. Uh, your mom just gave up driving at 100. I'm 73, actually. Are you? Yeah. Okay, you don't look a day over 72. <laughs> but your mom gave up driving at 100. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so just a little math tells me you have 28 more years of, uh, 27 more years of driving ahead of you. Yeah, I could be, I, 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 so someone's like, getting. Because, you know, I'm just giving people a little context that uh, you're not winding down here. You're just ramping up, man. 27 more years of Peter Gross behind the wheel. We got to get you insured. Yeah. Um, 
That's my number one priority. I'm good for a few weeks. I, I can relax. Well, you're being very generous. This sucks, okay? Help, just roll with me. I think this sucks for you. It's going to affect your livelihood. It's going to affect the quality of your life, your family's life. Uh, Peter, we got to get you back behind the wheel where you can you can make more money. So is there a call to action? Like, uh, I've taken all this in. I think you got hosed here. I would like to know, are we seeking, uh, maybe there's somebody out there who works in the automotive insurance industry and can shed some light. Like, can I give a call to action that if anybody has listened to this story and has any good advice or uh, any way to help you, Peter Gross, they can write me, mike at torontomike.com, and I will absolutely uh, bring this to Peter Gross, the FOT Hall of Famer. Quite quite frankly, um, at one point I got a quote um, six thousand dollars a year, which would be pricey, five hundred dollars a month. But being that I can make five, six, seven hundred dollars a week, I, I could deal with that. And, and then perhaps in my actions, say there's no reason for me to have paid that much. Give me some of it back, whatever. Um, and then I was subsequently told, a, um, you'd have to pay that six thousand up front, which I could do, and then b. Um, because this quote does not include collision and because you're leasing your car, the people you're leasing your car from would need to see that you have collision. So we can't give you the quote. Yeah. You're up, uh, you're up shit's Creek without a paddle. Okay. You, right? You've uh, used that one. Yeah. You've, you've reached your maximum <laughs> usage of Schitt's Creek without a paddle. Well, you know, when I was writing the description, I said you were in a pickle, but what the hell does that mean? Like, I'm like, Peter Gross is in a pickle. And then I'm like, if there's a lot of vinegar in that pickle. Yeah. But what do you, what do you mean you're in a pickle? Like, at least I understand Schitt's Creek without a paddle. Like that sucks, man. But you're in a pickle. What does that mean? Wasn't Schitt's Creek one of the great comedies of all time? I haven't, uh, I haven't yet got p- past the first episode. So, oh, uh, I love, I love. I'm sure it's and have great. you seen? The, we're going off on a tangent here. Have you seen all the commercials the actors in Shit's Creek have been doing lately? I saw Dan, Dan Levy, and uh, Eugene, Eugene and Levy, know. and Dan Levy doing some ads. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The, Maybe for, they can uh, get you insurance. Bank, uh, banking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if if I'm just gonna, I'm gonna plow ahead, and uh, I'm gonna make phone calls and, and okay. scream and yell on the phone some more. Okay, I'm glad you came in. I'm glad we got to talk about this. Uh, I worry about you. You're an FOTM Hall of Famer, and I just want to make sure you can drive and, uh, and and make money for your family. Something I held on to, again, I take these notes in real time. Uh, I take notes on different people so that I don't forget when they come over. I took a note because uh, Gene Valitis, how well do you know Gene Valitis? Well, I worked with him many years ago. Terrific guy, a lot of fun. Okay, so Gene has a podcast he does with uh, Jesse Dillon. Jesse and Gene podcast or something to that effect. And uh, Je- uh, Gene has let me know that there's a whole whack of Peter Gross on these uh, old clips. Can I just play a little of something? Really? Yeah. So let's listen to this. I think we should settle the bet. Uh, yep. re- remember, kids, when Jesse and Gene make bets, we don't do it for money because that's so crazy. Remember, when you're making bets, do what Jesse and Gene do. The loser has to eat dog food. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Now, What uh, was the bet, Gloria? Yesterday, uh, you were going to call the uh, Beverly, Beverly Hills Martin. Hotel, mm-hmm. and I mentioned to you that it was closed for renovations. And of course, you didn't believe me. What does Gloria know? So you called them anyway, <laughs> and they said, hi, we're closed for renovations. So you lost the bet, and you have to eat dog food. Now, I... I I, I being the nice person that I Somehow I feel that you brought the dog food. I just, did, but yeah, I'm such yeah, a nice yeah. person that I went and I got special gourmet dog food, well, food for you. And and Gina's taught me that presentation is everything, so... Oh, this is really this something. Set, oh, and here oh, we go. That. Maybe we should describe what we have. We have... Uh, lovely. We have lovely <laughs> dog food sitting on a, an elegantly uh, decorated plate with a bed of lettuce. <laughs> we've, we've got some, uh, looks like... Uh, kibbles and bits and we've got some we've got, what, what do dog, we have here gourmet dog cookies i'll be honest there, with you um, it looks very nice actually. there's a little it, pink cookie this looks red like cookie you know if you go to one of uh, peter oliver's restaurants there's oliver beaufantage <laughs> beaufantage <laughs> sounded good to me <laughs> auberge de pommier no but there's another one bozo <laughs> thanks oh bozo <laughs> well Jeez, you just, admonish just me just like i'm a two-year-old eat <laughs> dog food <laughs> There's Auberge des Palmiers, ah, right. there's Oliver's, uh-huh. and there's Beaufanger. Beaufanger, that's right. That's right, that's what I said. You got your Bowfinger there. Yeah. And, uh, it's, that's right, Bowfinger. Not that the, he serves dog food, but he serves... Bowfinger, he's a man. A man with a mind. So anyway, this looks like, at Peter Oliver's restaurants, 
The presentation is incredible. Mm -hmm. Where's Peter Gross, though? Oh, Get him hey. in here. No, 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 no. I didn't tell him. Actually, I no, didn't what? tell him. We'll take the pink cookies and the red cookies after and we'll. No, we'll let's do it now. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I ate the dog for just a week ago, okay? And I'm going to eat the dog Aww. food because I'm not going to be a bed squelcher. going to get out of the bed. I'm not no, going to no. be. But smell this stuff. You it know smells what? awful. Seriously, That's... it would be worth getting gross in here just to say we got some free samples. If we can get him in here, what hey, do we, take, what do we call this stuff? Long. What do we call it? Say uh, it's say it's new. Okay. Say it's new. Call him in. Call it's him new in. gourmet it's diet food. Yeah, but take right. the, take those little cookie things off the plate, though. What little cookie? The other the ones that look like dog. No, just take those off. Take those off. Take that off. Yeah, just give him those. Hide the rest. Yeah, ask him if he'll try these. Say we got new gourmet cook. Well, okay. okay there. You know what you okay. want to do at Pretend parties? Pretend we're eating. Give me some meat. Pretend we're okay. eating. Okay, you, what you want to do at parties, too, kids, is to put dog food out for pate and serve it to your guests. Everyone take some beans. <laughs> pretend we're eating it and serve it to Okay. Come on, people. New cookies. Is it coming? Yep. Is it coming? Uh, Good. Okay. No. Try this. Here's the seagull. Try this. Come here. Mm. Seriously. These are, good, eh? unbelievable. These are These are diet sweet cookies. Yeah. They're like unbelievable. Give him the microphone. Peter's got the red one. How do you like one? that? He's good or what? Oh, you tricked me. <laughs> no, we didn't. What is it? They're, these are diet. These are new diet cookies loaded full of fiber. Yeah, no, Peter's, no salt take a, take, and no fat. This is dog food. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but good dog food. <laughs> So he takes another bite. <laughs> Do you remember any of this, Peter? It, it came to me vaguely. That was a long time to get to the part. It came, oh, it, I should have pre <laughs> listen. I should have listened to it before I played it. I would have edited it. But my apologies for all I, that. I, but, I, I, uh, as it went along, I'm thinking <laughs> Jesse and Gene, by the way, were great, great radio hosts. Uh, maybe ahead of their time. Almost so, what too era did you work with them? Like, when about was this? And like, for how long? Is this, is this on Q107? What is this on? <laughs> no, no, it was 680 News. Uh, not, but pre, yeah, pre 680. 680. I'm sorry, pre-680. Yeah, 93 yeah. it goes CF, on news. CFTR, right. 1990. Okay, good. Okay, so how long did you work with Jesse and Gene? <sighs> I, I can't be, maybe a year? You know, because they, they, they always change the morning hosts. Yeah, I think I think uh, Tom Rivers left, and I think Jesse and Gene. Took okay, okay, because I worked. Rivers. Rivers. And then I think Jesse and Gene had it until they flipped to all news, and then they literally went okay, to 640. Okay, okay, so they could have been up to 1993. You're right. They 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 gassed all of the uh, radio hosts in 1993. Everyone but uh, the news team there with uh, Dick Smythe and uh, Evelyn Macko, Wacko Macko, and all and Larry Silver and all those cats. All right, Peter. I just thought I'd clear that out because I had it sitting <laughs> sitting around. I'm like, I gotta ask Peter Gross. I didn't even know you worked on the Jesse and Gene show. Like, I didn't know. They, they, there were some wonderful moments, I can tell you that. And they made you eat dog food, which is by the way kind of mean. You, you're you a good sport about it because they're trying to trick you and trick you into eating dog food. Well, apparently, I'll eat anything. And you went back for seconds. Yeah. Because you're a good sport. Okay. <laughs> and Peter, we're going to see if anybody reaches out and can help you. I've had some people down on their luck on this program, and we've had some very good FOTMs listening. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah. I'm not down on my luck. I, I, everything's fine. You know, let me let me give you a little you're anecdote. You're not down on your luck. Can, you can can't I drive. Give, can I give you an anecdote? Before we go, of course, I, I I had a delivery downtown Toronto. Was it yesterday? And as I'm walking along at random, this guy comes up to me. I don't know what his point was. He says, "Name two things you're happy about." And the first thing I said was, "My mother just turned 101, and I'm thrilled that she's still around." And he said, "And the second thing I said, I'm not a Palestinian." So I mean, everything is relative. I got I got a problem. But I'm gonna. You're getting heavy with me in no, the, no, the theme I'll, song here. No, no, but I'll transcend it. I'm gonna get by. I, I can. I can go a few weeks without driving. This, you're, you have perspective. There yeah, are yeah, worse yeah. off people than Peter Gross yes, right yeah. now, and you might not be able to drive for a little bit, but uh, you'll figure that shit out, and you'll you'll end up on your feet because you got a good attitude. Excellent. And that's why you're a FOTM Hall of Famer, Peter Gross. Don't leave without your lasagna. Make sure we get a photo. It was great seeing you again. I can't wait to get you back here. Uh, maybe with John Gallagher. As a remote guest, is that in the works? I'm listening to the, the uh, five, Fan 590 morning show and thinking how sensational it would be if it was Gross and Gallagher well, save the world. <laughs> you know what? You're preaching to the choir here, yeah. but I also know there's a Slim to None and uh, Slim's on a uh, GO train heading out of the city right now. So that ain't going to happen, but I agree with you. If I can get... Uh, the great John Gallagher to join us remotely and you in the basement it would be a fun catch up and find out what's going on with him so we're going to try to make that happen I'm up for it and that brings us to the end of our 1450th show 
You can follow me on Twitter and Blue Sky. I'm at Toronto Mike. Hey, subscribe to a wonderful podcast called Down the Stretch. Peter Gross uh, hosts that show. It's wonderful. Everything you ever wanted to know about uh, Ontario horse racing. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Down the Stretch. Much love to all who made this episode possible. That's Great Lakes Brewery. A new episode of Between Two Fermenters just dropped this morning. Check that out. Palma Pasta. I've got lasagna for Peter here. RecycleMyElectronics.ca. That's where you go, Peter. If you have old electronics, old cables, old tech, old devices you need to get rid of, don't throw it in the garbage. Go to RecycleMyElectronics.ca. Raymond James Canada, they have a great podcast called the Advantaged Investor Podcast, hosted by Chris Cooksey. Subscribe and educate yourself. The Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team, their home opener at Christie Pitts is May 12 in the afternoon. Be there or be square. And of course, Ridley Funeral Home, I'm going to drop a new episode of Life's Undertaking in about 10 minutes. Brad Jones kicks out the most popular funeral songs. See you all tomorrow when my special guest is Blair Packham. He's kicking out his 10 favorite protest songs. That should be fantastic. And we might have a special appearance by somebody else, but uh, we'll see. That's tomorrow morning. See you all then. Mine.